Bună ziua și bine ați venit la sesiunea Idei la clasă, instrumente simple și distractive de programare. Eu sunt Roxana Turcu de la Asociația Textul, gazda acestei sesiuni, împreună cu invitata Polin Baz, pe care o voi introduce uh, imediat, <laughs> cu mai multe detalii. Uh, și alături de mine în chat și regie tehnică este colega mea Elena și uh, Adrian, care ne ajută cu streamingul. Uh, Iată-ne în prima zi de festivalul digital predau viitor, creat de Asociația TechSub, un maraton educațional pentru profesori din România și Republica Moldova despre pedagogie digitală, STEAM și cetățenie digitală. Înainte de orice, să știți că în chat colega mea, Elena, a pus informații despre uh, cum să avem o, uh, o experiență grozavă în timpul festivalului și eu o să dau imediat share la uh, prezentare pentru mai multe detalii. Și nu acesta era linkul. Ok, super. Acesta este butonul. Doar vă aducem aminte că registrarea va fi disponibilă ulterior și o veți putea accesa. Vă invităm să contribuiți în chat cu întrebări și comentarii pe care să le preserați, bineînțeles, cu asertivitate, respect, politețe și energie bună. Vă readuc aminte de Padlet, unde veți găsi toate informațiile, inclusiv prezentarea care va fi încărcată ulterior și dacă suntem la Padlet, vă aduc aminte și despre uh, invitația la reflexie, așa că inclusiv din această sesiune să vă notați trei lucruri pe care le-ați aflat noi, două, pe care, două idei interesante pe care vreți să le împărtășiți uh, cu colegii apoi sau un lucru pe care vreți să îl duceți uh, la clasă. Pentru restul sesiunii o să continuăm în engleză, așa că o să schimb acum în engleză. Uh, to introduce you uh, the guest uh, of our session, I'm really honored to have with me Pauline Mas, uh, who teaches computer science at the Royal Dutch uh, Visio School for Visual Impaired Students. Uh, she worked in ICT for 20 years and then uh, she quit her job to start teaching ICT in school to inspire uh, girls into tech jobs. Uh, she's also an uh, author, uh, a book author, and um, uh, she has uh, a book about uh, coding uh, to be released uh, or to have been released this summer. And uh, she says that she wants to empower girls by teaching their teachers how they can give coding lessons. And today she is here to uh, present examples from uh, activities that she does and also to offer simple tools and creative tips to do coding in the classroom. Uh, without any further ado, I introduce uh, Pauline Mas and thank you so much for accepting our uh, invitation. Well, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I have a small, I have a small presentation for you. You can follow the presentation uh, with the link, and you can click on all the links who are in the presentation. So uh, I will start my presentation. If you have any questions, you can put it in the chat, and then we will answer it at the end because I cannot read the chat when I'm presenting when I'm doing my presentation. Share. Yes. Yeah. So I'm really happy to be here. Um, so you can scan the code if you want to, and they I think they will put it in the chat too if you want to. Um my name is Paulina Mas, and as I told as uh, Roxana told you already, uh, I start computers when the computers were really big. And I did that for 20 years, and then I quit my job and started co teaching coding in schools to inspire girls. And now I'm teaching at a school of visual impaired students, uh, and I am introducing the 
computational thinking com curriculum in all the five schools in the Netherlands. So here you can see Brian, we're working with the micro bit and they're sending Morse code to each other. I'm also a EU coding teacher and ambassador. So I'm promoting coding in the Netherlands and also in Europe. And I'm really fun by the micro bits. So my new book will, co will come with 13 new projects about making with the micro bits. So, and I'm a mother of four. And of course, they are expanding with boyfriends and girlfriends. So la last weekend, we had fun in uh, Euro Disney. So here's a very recent picture from the day before yesterday. So, so Jeanette Wing, she introduced, she made the, um, uh, the uh, she said computational thinking is a way of thinking to solve a, pro uh, a, compu a problem with the computer so the computer can carry it out. Um, I think, I don't know if you have an, an other definition for computational thinking in your country, but we always struggle with the name computational thinking and we sat down a very, very a few times with a lot of people in the Netherlands to come up with a Dutch name, but we didn't. But still, if you look at the micro bit, you know, the micro bit is computational thinking because you can really make something with a micro bit and then you have to code, use the micro bit to do it. So I'm really fond of that. Seymour Papert, he started in 1960 already with teaching children how to code a computer. And if you look at this picture, he has a, a kind of a b-bot in his hand. You know, he made that already in 1960. And he always say you only can teach the children when it is really it has a personal meaning to them. So for instance, you think we're going to make a poem or robot or we're going to make a computer. So name it, don't say we're going to do a lesson of Scratch. No, we're going to make a comic and then we use Scratch or we're going to make, um, uh, we're going to make a computer. So. And then we will just look, use uh, paper tools and everything to write it on. So you really have to name it. Don't use the program you're using it because they will not understand it, but really give it a name. It's very, that is very important because then the student, your students know immediately what, what they're going to make. Samuel Papert also wrote uh, um, a very important um a paper already 20 things to do with a computer and this is from 1961 and you still can download it because um i found it on the internet and put it on my web blog so you can download it and it's very interesting to see and also there is this new edition on it it's called 20 things to do with a computer 50 years later so this book has came out very recently and many people who wrote, who helped writing this paper in 1971, still added new things to it in this way. So maybe it's interesting for you to see. If you look, if you Google for Simo Papert, you can see still the research he did in 1960, what kind of computers he used then with your students. And as you see, it's always fun to see that he's really making it work. And also Papert is, in the is the started also Lego Minecraft and Scratch, so that's important. The ideas from that. He studied under Piaget, and Piaget always said they only uh, children can only understand it if they invent it themselves. You cannot teach children how to uh, learn how to swim if you're not actually in a swimming pool with them. They cannot learn that from YouTube. So you really have to, they have to figure it out how they can float. You can help them, but they have to figure out how they float. And also from him is the very uh, stages of development that you really have to be careful what you teach children at what age, what level, how they think. Because if you, you teach them, two difficult things in a very early age, they will not understand it. I will continue with computational thinking. Computational thinking, they, did, they describe, I think like 12 different words, what's part of computational thinking, but usually 
you only use the four ones. It's called decom decomposition, it's abstraction, pattern recognition, and algorithms. Algorithms, most of the things you do with computational thinking and coding are algorith algorithms. Uh, decomposing is uh, a big, you have a big problem and you make it into small problems and you start with one problem and then the end you can uh, put it all together. Abstraction is, you can do that in a very early age already because everything, uh, look in the room, everything what is round or everything what is a square. And then you can say like a pizza is a round one, but also an apple is a round one. So that's that's what you can do very at a very young, young age already. Pattern recognition is very important because then they can see what is a loop if they can recognize the pattern, what is there, what is missing. An algorithm is how you do it in what, uh, what things. You can always do unplugged activities. I always start my lesson with an unplugged activity. Even if they are 15, 17 years old, I always try to figure out how can I do it unplugged in a very small way. And um, in the UK, so in England, they started teaching computational thinking in a very young age already, and it is mandatory. So, and then I was um, at a lecture, uh, I think two or three years ago, just before COVID. And I was at this lecture, lecture and this professor said, at the age still 12, it's, uh, you, you can always do unplugged activities and you don't have to use a computer. It's better to do only unplugged activities. They get all the words and they will understand it. And then in a later age, you can do plugged activities. I always think it is difficult to do a lot of unplugged active activities because they think, well, now we're going to have ICT lessons or computer lessons and we don't use a computer. So I always want to make a combination of it. But keep in mind, you can always do unplugged activities that doesn't cost a lot of money and you can do it very easily. You don't need internet, you don't need computers. So. Keep that in mind. Now I have like, I made this lesson and with a talk, which I have with uh, Roxana, uh, I made three different, different levels. So I start with four till, what can you do with four till eight years old? So I always uh, I said already unplugged activities. And you can say what days of the week, is it that's a that's a very easy thing you can do or you can say what colors are these so uh, put all the red colors together all the blue colors together or make like a list from small to large or from um from all the different kind of like all the round things together so those are very easy activities what you can do and linda lucas i have one of her books here you can see linda lucas she wrote a few really nice books, what you can read in the classroom. It's about this nice girl. And she is walking through a computer and she is uh, doing activities in the computer and you start and the children start understanding what is in a computer. And she made this beautiful drawings and that's continuing in the series of books. And then you look for Hello Ruby you find unplugged activities, what you can do. I will show it in this lecture, a few of them. Of course, if you want to do something with computers or something robotics, use like, we call it a B-Bot, but I think you will recognize it. It's something with bu big buttons on top of it and you can move it forward, left or right, or go to the uh, back or stop or you can download Scratch Junior, you can do it on an iPad. And recently you can, there is a beta version, you can download it on the computer. You can do Scratch Junior, which is really fun, what I really love to do. So that's, that's usually what I do at that age. Not too much, lots of activities in your classroom. You do already lots of computational thinking. Here, this is, I made uh, three schedules like this. 
So here you can see algorithm, decomposition, pattern recognition, and abstraction. And you see activities, what you can do under there. This is all unplugged, and those are plugged. So for an algorithm, yeah, do singing, do dances, copy me. What do we do? For decomposition, uh, you can do like dressing up dolls or other things or talk about uh, uh, what is in the day you have the morning the afternoon and the evening and then you can say what do we do in the morning and then those are all small activities that's also already decomposition that's what you do in your classroom already and pattern recognition i told you already like all the squirrels circles or squares or put them all in colors that's what you do a lot already and this is fun make your own game computer game I have a picture of that from that later. That is an activity from Linda Liukas. And for the plucked activities, um, I start always a B-Bot lesson, B-Bot lessons, how it is working. And then when one lesson after that, I do, I give them a B-Bot driving license. If they do like five or six activities in the right way, they get a license and they're very proud of it. Like uh, we in the Holland, you get a license when you can, tie your shoelaces and also uh, around Santa Claus they get like um, uh, a, a paper uh, a small um, thing that they they pass their exam to be the help of Santa Claus and here is a scratch junior uh, recently on the on the tablet and also on a computer to download which is really nice and this is also from Linda Liukas. It's a memory game. So they have to figure out all the patterns to come together. And these memory games are all the pictures which are in the book of Linda Liukas. And here uh, I can click on it. I hope you still see it. Roxana, do you still see my screen? Do you see a map? Yes. A map? Yeah. Yes, okay. So this is just this is just a memory game. And in here are all the pet, the the pictures who are in the book of Linda Lucas, and you can talk about it. If this is too big, you can say here, I can put it here, like for instance, I only want like six different kind of things, patterns you can do. And on the website of Linda Lucas, you can all print them and download it, and then they can use it also on the table. Um, I teach visual impaired students. So we do this on the DJ board when the students only see a little bit. And then of course we only like, like do like four pairs. That's difficult enough for our students already. So this is a very simple one, what you can do. And um, yeah, here, yeah, here is make your own computer. You can download this and they can make their own computer and glue it all in there. And also I say, look at your keyboard. What kind of keys do you have there? And then I show them there. What, what does a Chinese keyboard look like or a French or a Dutch keyboard look like or an Arabic keyboards look like? And then the first time they really start to look at the keyboards, we have like in the Netherlands, we have that QWERTY. And then I show them the also is like an Azerty teacher uh, keyboard. And they think that is really funny to do. So, and I think I have some pictures here of it too. Yes, here you see. Here we have like a special dressing up uh, dolls. And we make the clothes in different kind of material because our students are visual impaired. So they can feel the different kind of clothes. And of course, when you first, put on the trousers and then you put on your underwear, that's not going to work and they will laugh about it, but that's thinking in patterns. Here you can say making a small computer and here is the driver's license we use for the B-Bot, see how proud they are. And you can, those are pictures really from my classroom. So you can see to the left, right and the girl in the red, she hardly can see, but she can see the lights on the B-Bot. So she's funny with that. And here you see Scratch Junior, always really fun to do. And it's a very good start, beginning for Scratch. Now, eight to 10 years old, always think about unplugged activities. Always think about an unplugged activity, what you can do before you start your lesson. 
with Scratch, make like a comic, uh, make a presentation in Scratch. Don't use PowerPoint, but make a presentation in Scratch. You can do math projects. You can look for math projects or language projects which in made in Scratch by other teachers. You can use it. And uh, very often we make like a comic book in Scratch with different kind of levels. If you use Scratch as a teacher, make a teacher account. Very important. You can see what your students are making. But also a nice activity is make a stop motion, which is very important because they have to make like a storyboard, which is an abstraction of the story they're going to make and then they're going to make. So this is a very good combination of unplugged and also a plugged activity. And then make a small game with them. In the Netherlands, we have a really nice website for that, but probably you will have it too. Maybe I can share it. Also here, the same schedule, eight or 10 years old, old algorithm. An algorithm is also folding a paper plane because they have to follow the steps which are on the plane. And they have to think from 2D, 3D, 2D in 3D, which is very important for their abstraction. Uh, program each other, like uh, don't program the B-Bot, but program each other. One step forward, how are you going to walk around a chair? Are you going to do 10 sit-ups and do, ever, do something else? So that's a fun activity. We have like roll a robot, which is pattern recognition. Here you see you need a dice, yeah, and then the, you need to uh, make this, and then they have different kind of bodies. So if the dice is two, you have to draw that body. If the dice is three, you have to draw that head. If the dice is five, you have to draw that arms and legs, and if you draw, you have to use that one to uh, to use the control which are on the robot. So online there are different kind of things for this. And we also, I always also use it. And then we have like touchable things for the, our students. So this is a very easy activity. Or make a flip book, which is really fun to do because they can take it home. I see, I hope it's working. You see, it's a very good activity before you make like a storyboard. They make like a small booklet like this. They can look online what kind of ideas they have and they start thinking they have to really make an abstract picture of a, a person because they have to make like 100 drawings to make a good one. And also they have to draw it on the back, on, under, under there. So you can really flip the book. So and also because those are the post-its, it's very cheap. So they can take it home and they love that to take it home and show it to their parents that they make it. And then for plucked activity, uh, there is this uh, code.org activities, and lots of activities on code.org and dance, dance, dance. I always do. Like you have to make different kind of figures in the dance. You have to can choose different kind of music. They can do it. So that's always fun to do. Here is the game studio they can make in the Netherlands. And probably, um, can I do it quite time? Yes, I'll just do it. This is, this is all in Dutch. So. You don't have to make so this is the 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 top of it of the person you're going to make and then i say continue this is get the finish show the point so this is just a, a small start and i also keep it on the basic make a level you can make a level from the from top or from the uh from the the z uh, from one side All right. So here is, for instance, here is so my person. I can put them in. Yeah. I put it in here. 
And I always say put in one or two things and then test right away. So I say test, get to finish. And they can make more kind of things to it. So stop. And here is some things are moving or you can put in like a sun, a sun somewhere. So it's very easy to make and you can make it larger and up and kids love it. And you know what is important when I do this? Because they play each other's game when they are finished. So the last 10 minutes or 50 minutes to play each other game and they give look like, what's really good in this game or what can be improved. So that is important. And if I think if you look somewhere in your own language, you will find something to make their own game like that. Of course, scratch and make like a stop motion. So that's always fun to do. I think this is like a stop motion students made. From, well. I take some materials and they make it. Uh, a few examples of those um, eight years old to make those kind of stop motion. And you see if they make it, they see immediately what they can improve about the game. So if you do it again, like uh, one month later, you will see that is a big improvement on what they are making. This is just the first time they did it. But you, you also see that they have this idea already. And because they have to make a storyboard, is very important because you need the abstraction to really make like a stop motion. Here I have some uh, examples. Here you see a roller robot, what they make. Here is how they make like a stop motion. They have to work together. This is like the game studio. And here you see what is really good on the game and what can be improved. So that is important what they make on the computer. And here you see on Scratch, Scratch, you can make like 100 lessons in your classroom with Scratch, but you have to define something. So here, I always have like three or four lessons that they make like a comic with all the characters who are in there already. And they also have to first have to make a story about what we're going to do. So this is really fun to make. And it is all about language. It's nothing, not so much about coding, but it's more about language. And you have to wait till somebody else will give you an answer. You have to wait like two minutes, two, two seconds or three seconds. You cannot speak all at the same time. So that's in the beginning already. And you get really fun stories about it. Now the 10 to 14 years old, you still can do unplugged activities. I have a few examples of that. Uh, you can do Scratch Extra, for instance, using a camera or using sound with Scratch, or make a combination of Scratch and Microbit. And of course, the Microbit, the Microbit, I love the Microbit, so I will show you some examples later. You can make an arcade game, which is also on the Make Code website. Or you can start scripting with JavaScript or Python, but also design an app that's on paper, unplugged. They have to think about in a small group, what kind of app are we going to make? So what kind of app do I miss? What kind of app I wish I was there? And I always say to the students, don't think about a game app. It has to be an app what is useful to you. And then you you see them looking, why? Because I want to make a game app. I said, no, because there are enough game apps. I want you to think about in another way. 
And then sometimes you get really nice ideas. For instance, a student, students came up with an idea. We're going to uh, make a picture of our poop when you go to the toilet. And I said, oh, yes, of course, 12 years old, they're going to make a photo of their poop. And then they said, and then we will ask a doctor if he can examine the poop with, on the picture, if it is, if you're eating well, or if you're healthy. And then I never thought about it. So they just made really nice design of this. And also you had girls and they said, when we go shopping, and I'm in a shop. And I want to buy this T-shirt, but then I don't know if I have the, the trousers I have at home, if they will fit. So I want an, an app. So make a picture of me in my new T-shirt. And then I want to swipe if the, the skirt I have at home will fit the new T-shirt I want to buy. And I said, I want that app. I wish I was there. So and it's not about making the app because that is quite quite difficult to really make the app what I had in mind. But thinking about and designing and presenting, you get all 21st century learning skills. Here also, like this is the sandwich box. You probably have seen it. Welcome to Sandwich Maker 2001. <laughs> I'm an old model. Right hand, pick up bread slice. Right hand, pick up bread slice. Put down bread slice on plate. Put down bread slice on plate. Pick up jam jar with left hand. Pick up jam jar with left hand. Unscrew jam jar with right hand. Unscrew jam jar with right hand. Put down jam jar with left hand. Put down jam jar with left hand. Now put jam jam lid down with right hand. Compute. Pick up pick up butter butter tub with left hand. Pick up butter tub with left hand. Uh, take off the take off the lid with right hand. Take off butter lid with right hand. Put down the butter lid. Pick up knife with right hand. Using right, using the knife, um, scoop some, scoop some butter, and then spread it on the, the bread and get a slice of bread. Scoop butter, spread it on bread. <laughs> They really have to be very careful how to describe it. So last week I made we made like a, a tosti, you know, with uh, with uh, cheese and ham, and we put in a toaster so it will heat up. And they wanted to use a ketchup or curry. They have to make a picture, uh, a choose for that. So we had a lot of fun, and of course we eat them. So here is design an app. If you click on this link. You get like uh, the lesson I have for that one. You can do like pixel drawing. It's also pattern recognition. So that is, uh, do, you can do that in different kind of ways. You have Lego for that, Lego dots to use that or just on papers. Binaire counting, you can do that for the abstraction also. Uh, they can write their name, Binaire. So that is fun to do. And here is the micro bits basic. Uh, make an arcade game is face sensing for scratch what you can do or you can do some scripting for instance uh, javascript and python and i gave a lecture for you like a few months ago and then i put in there some scripting uh, examples for that so maybe you can put a link or look at that here is the arcade game they can make their game in arcade and then they can put it on their phone and play it, which is of course fun. You can see a Python game, you gave them a basic of Python and they will change the colors. This is uh, making a star or making a joke in Python. They can change some basics or they start learning how to do it. This is a P5 uh, J JavaScript. You can change, they can change the colors or make something else from it. So they also, and here you see the, it is very easy to read. 
So first change it and then change all the forms and put it on somewhere else. So it is better that they first change something and then they make something new that is easier to work. And here you see the micro bits. Here I use like a, they, I use like a LED matrix. They can make a pixel drawing for that and then put it on here. So there's also a higher abstraction. Here you can follow me on Instagram. Of course, a lot of Instagram is on the micro bit. Sorry for that. And also I have a lack of websites. Also with four people, I put a wrong website in here, I see. So this is the micro bit website. I also have another one. When you look for four pip, that is my name. So always think big, but start small if you want to do something. Also introduce that to your students. Okay, you have this idea, you want to make a robot life size, but we first start just with some carton. We're going to make first that one and then you can change it. So I wonder if there are some questions what I can that I can answer so also I have something here to show you but not so not so much so are there some questions did they come in uh first of all Pauline thank you so much for this uh presentation <laughs> it was really entertaining and indeed funny and creative as uh, the title was announcing yeah 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 um, uh, we have a comment. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, the sandwich bot idea uh, was loved uh, yeah. by the watcher. Yeah. Also, uh, creative example with the poop. I think uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, we didn't talk. Uh, yeah. think well, it, it's, it didn't come from me. Eh? It came from the students. Yeah. Yeah. So, but also when you, they start in the beginning, they don't like it. But when they start thinking about it, uh, we had a student and then, then she said, it's always, I always don't I never know what to wear. So I put, I want to put all my clothes in the nap and I want to shake my phone and then it will come up with what I will wear today. So I, that's also funny things what they think about in a different kind of way than, than I would think. Yeah, that is important. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. Um, you mentioned uh, when you when you were talking about uh, stop motion, you mentioned that you need abstraction in order yeah. to to be able to do a stop motion video. And um, could you give us a bit more details about what what type of skills or what type of <laughs> abilities do you need in order to or not necessarily need, but uh, what type of abilities the students can develop? through this kind of um, approach yeah. uh, in activities. Yeah, if they, um, um, when, um, when we make like a stop motion, I will show them usually like a picture. This is a stop motion. This is professionally weighed and this is made by students and they see the big difference already. Like, okay. And then uh, they make like teams up with three or four. And then I always give them a paper like they, have to write a story, make a storyboard. So they make drawings and only when they made the drawings, they get the iPad to do it. So that is important. And also I take like material like Lego and clay and all kinds of things. So they can make it, make their own, uh, uh, get the ideas what they can make. And then I always keep them because I will have like one hour or 40, one hour and 15 minutes, something like that. I said, okay, now you have to really speed up, sit down on the ground, make like your own studio on the ground, keep the, lap, the iPad standing still. Don't pick it up the whole time because you get dizzy with that. And of course, so the people will watch it. And then make your picture and you need at least 30 pictures, three zero pictures, then you have a story. And then you immediately see when they, I did that and then they see immediately oh we did this wrong and then sometimes they can make like a new movie in five minutes because then they know the technique how to do it and that one is really better already and I do that from the age of five six years old easy and sometimes I use like a big colored paper to put on the floor I fold it and the iPad is standing on there so they have like this small studio and they lay on the ground they have to work together 
And you always can see one of these putting all the small uh, uh, dolls from Lego and the other one is putting, making the picture and the other one think about what kind of music must be there or they can speak it in. So you see if you do that, the, the, if you do that reg, like, like four times a year, the, the, the stop motion is getting better and better. And they do it at home too, because it's, it's free. They can they download them some on the iPad at home and they will do it there. I love making stop motion, yeah. And they use like, they, they learn algorithm, use a, an iPad, think about the ideas they have in their head and then they make it into a movie. So it is really computational thinking in my eyes, yeah. Uh, thank you. Um, there's another curiosity um, because you, you mentioned uh, working with the visually impaired students. Yeah. And you also showed us uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, some slides uh, with examples. Um, can you give us a bit more details? When you prepare uh, activities for the visually impaired students, what kind of uh, factors do you have in mind and what do you consider when preparing uh, for them? Um, I, I'm quite new in this school and my, uh, my colleagues always laugh about me because I first going to do the lesson like I normally do in regular and I think about how my students can do it and then I come up with ideas how to change it so for instance like the, the uh, dressing up the doll we made different kind of material how they can dress up the doll so they know that it's underwear and that it's a skirt and then you also can use a we do a, you in a regular I would do put all the red colors uh, clothes together or the blue clothes together. But here you say, okay, use this material or uh, feel for this material, which is smooth or flat or, every, or something else. And like with all the robots, we made all the patterns, we put it together. Like uh, the binary lesson, learn how to binary. You have those papers, what you download and we 3D printed those. So um, we use a lot of sound for uh, using scripting. We use Sonic Pi because the output is sound and they use like code. I don't know if you know Sonic Pi. It's really fun to do. And uh, you see that we have like in the classroom only have like um, the our, our, we have small classrooms like with less than 10 students with our two or three are, don't see anything and the others see a little bit. So then we make pairs to do scratch with them because scratch is really difficult. And I made all the blocks in scratch unplugged. So print them out and put Braille on there so they can make the code to put it on the table and then I will put it in. Yeah. So it has, it's always a combination. And for instance, with uh, I start now a project after the holidays uh, to make a podcast because that's a, for the 14 years old we have like a podcast really good podcast how they can make with uh, all the microphones and they come up they can they make like do that with the full class yeah uh, podcast sounds very uh interesting can you give us a bit more details about it like uh, you do it with the students how does it work uh is it for the school um, okay. Maybe the teachers are also interested in uh, <laughs> the podcast in their own. Uh, you can you can very you can very easily make a podcast just with your with your phone. That's no problem. But making a podcast, uh, you you start about what is an interview, what kind of questions do you ask, and how do you quest, ask the questions? What people are you going to ask? What is the subject? So. Last year, we did a subject about fake news. Last year, the podcast was about fake news with our students. So uh, we looked up what is fake news, what kind of uh, uh, questions can we ask, and, and, and what kind of people can we interview? So it usually is like teachers, or we say, now you believe in fake news, so you have to play the role of believing in fake news. And then you, you, it is very, it's not done in, in one hour. So it takes like eight lessons of one hour yeah, to make one. Yeah. 
but it is fun and we have a really nice weight uh, really a podcast uh, it is like this this size and then you have to connect your computer to it we got good microphones and good thing to put on your head on your head because our students who don't see a lot they hear a lot yeah so they hear immediately if somebody is passing by on their walking or so, they hear a door and then we have to do it all over again so so we make sure that it's okay that is a good quality <laughs> yeah i uh, thank you for uh, all these um uh insights <laughs> i think they're very useful uh, okay. we, have, uh, we have another uh, comment about the sandwich idea okay yes yeah uh, uh, it's actually a thank you note uh, from uh, one of our uh, okay, teachers. Yeah. Uh, she says it's a very good uh, way to understand algorithm. And I, I think it's actually uh, yeah. Yeah, very useful uh, to see. And also from the, the video you showed us, it was uh, it seemed very nice, creative. Yeah. But also very engaging. Yes, uh, it is. And I this guess. is a very good one because you also made one, but there's a little where all, where it all went wrong. Yeah. And you can, if you go to, if you look for sandwich robot, you can see because you need all the diff, all the good words. They have to really put a good words. You don't, you, they are not allowed to uh, do a something else. But I still have. Do I still have time? I don't know how much time do I still have? Yeah, we, have, we have them. We are. We are okay. okay. Oh, I made, this, <laughs> I made this. I made this. This this hand robot. So there is a hi sir. Uh, yeah, we can see. It. Yeah, there's you see a micro bit in here, and there are here on here are five servers. You see, yeah. Mm -hmm. So if I press here, that's very nice. So and it starts. It, it's having a nice. This one is so it just lasts because in here are small. You see. <laughs> so I made it, uh, and I, um, yeah, I just have some things here. I like to do something with LED lights, and I have, I made this one. I think I showed this the last time already. I'm just heading it here. Because here are all the servers and the LED lights to do that. So it's just controlled by it. Yeah. And the small doll is here. And, um, and I uh, I just hacked this uh, small cat cap. Mm -hmm. With, and there's a motor on it. And on the back is the micro bit. So we'll see if it can work it out. Uh, the battery is not is not enough, but it has to it has to turn. Yeah, <laughs> you probably will understand it. But now, oh yeah, here it goes. You see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if I shake my hand, it will turn, and it's a one button. So it has to shake. Yeah, here it goes again. You see? <laughs> so that's yeah. all done with the micro bit because it's. I think the micro bit is very creative. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it is it has it's difficult too so it has to be start at don't start too young with the micro bit because then they get frustrated that's not working what they want to do yeah. while watching all this i wish i was a student all over again <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, thank you for showing us this uh, uh, concrete examples with the micro bit because we have some questions around okay it. I think mean, people are very interested in how to uh, yeah. use it. Um, one, it's a more of a technical question. If uh, there are also English materials on the website about the micro bit, and then the other, it's if you can uh, give us a bit more details about the micro bit uh, kit. Okay, uh, the the micro bit is um, this uh, is this small computer. Here you can see is a small computer, so you have like a, a battery in the back of it, and you can attach crocodile clips on it. And then um, I made this mask to put it on with LED lights on it. So you can attach your servo motors on it, or you can really there is a lot of material what you can attach on. But and this micro bit got these LED lights, which you can code. Uh, they got like. Um, 
It's, you can use the shake, you can use the accelerometer. It's got a temperature, a sound sensor, a light sensor on it. So many sensors are already on the microbit, what you can use. And on the microbit side, on the make code side, or on the make code side, is lots and lots of materials what you can start to. And also, uh, you can buy very easy things to do, but I always like to make something. Why don't you, why do you, uh, why buy um, a traffic light if you can make one with a toilet roll and some LED lights, you know? Why buy um, a car if you can make your own car, you know, just with a CD player and, and other things. If you look on my Instagram, I give a lot of examples how you really can make very easy things with the micro bit and then understand it too. It's important. Don't buy something which is really closed. You, if you cannot open it, you don't own it, you always say. So I start opening things always and then try to make it and see how it is all working. But the make code is really, the micro bit is very interesting to use. And um, my new book is in English, so that's still on the way. As I always say, it's coming, it's coming. It is coming because it's almost finished, but such a, it's a, they made by an American publisher. So I'm depending on that one. Yeah, but it's on the website already, so. I'm looking forward uh, uh, for it, and maybe we can meet again for it again. Yeah, yeah there are three, there are thirty crazy projects in that book, so they really love it. Yeah, we I hacked like the I hacked a Barbie, but in the in the USA it's not allowed to use Barbie, so hacked a doll. It, the name is hacker doll. <laughs> Don't use hacker Barbie. Yeah. So those kind of stupid things are the funny things are in there. Yeah. Yeah. Make like a rocket where you have to pump, make a rocket with a, a pet flash, you know, such a, a plastic bottle, put a micro bit on it and then use like uh, where you pump up your your bike. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you, it will go up and then the micro bit starts counting when it goes up because he can he measure it. And when he starts in free fall, it's stopping counting. So, you know, exactly how many milliseconds your might your your rocket was up yeah so i made a boat in there <laughs> boats in the water <laughs> yeah, funny so, thing. Many, so many creative uh, ideas yeah. uh, pauline we have a few more uh, minutes and now that and i i, I there are still two questions that I would like to That's ask. okay come on <laughs> uh, now that you mentioned the book uh, yeah Maybe if, I'm, I'm just curious, how do you um, uh, combine this uh, being an author and, and writing a book and with your activity yeah. in class? Like how, how yeah. do you school? I, am, uh, I teach for two days a week and the other three days I'm just uh, need my playing time. Yeah. So I always make like a combination. And on, on those other three days, I give lectures uh, quite a lot, not uh, uh, like online in the Netherlands, in Belgium, in the UK, in Germany, or I fly to Spain and do lectures. So, and then I have more than enough time to do writing, which I really like. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. because this book is uh, number five already, and also I make games, I made this game. I made like a coding game. I go I do it one step to the right, pick something, pick something up. Um, here is go forward. So I made such a coding game. And I always find people, companies who are willing to make it and distribute it. I don't distribute it myself, but this is distributed by ProWise, which is in the Netherlands, a very big company of DigiBoard. I make like a memory game about um, online um, I said, chatting and cyber security and those kind of things. So yeah, it's I'm create. I'm always making things. I like that. Yeah. I see that it appeared a question. Uh... 
from one of our teachers uh, who is watching us if you can use Scratch with the Microbit kit. You can use Scratch and Microbit together. On the Scratch, on the Microbit, you have to put in a special small program you have to put on here. And also you have to put a Scratch link on the, on the computer and then you have this Scratch blocks. I can put, um, um, I can send you the link later because, or if you look at Scratch Microbit, you you find the link how it is working. So how how it will work. So you have to put something on the Microbit and then something on your computer, and then in Scratch you can add the Microbit blocks, and then you can use the two, which is really fun. Okay, we can add the link uh, later yeah. on in the Padlet. That would be good. Yeah, yeah, that would be good. Yes, yes access it um besides uh, lots of uh, hearts uh, <laughs> appearing in the, <laughs> in the chat there is another curiosity around uh, how many microbit kits do you actually have in the classroom uh, in the classroom i um, where is mine in the classroom i have usually uh, they have to share with two or three people. I usually buy these very cheap plastic boxes. And in here is a micro bit, is a micro bit, aluminium foil and some LED lights. This is the cable, a battery pack, and here's some piezo and crocodile. So I have like 10 of those kids always in the classroom, what they can use, and they can use the basic things. And then next to that, I have a few servos, more LED lights or Christmas lights. You can hack Christmas lights too, or other things. What I see at the $1 shop, we have those very cheap stores where you can buy things less than one euro with electricity in there. I buy usually a few of them and then we hack them and then they connect it to the microbit. Everything, what is like a two battery, it has a two battery pack on there in this one dollar shops. You can hack with the micro bit, so you always can like like a laser bead or other things. What you see, like sometimes a car, you can use them too. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you so much for uh, all these uh, tips. <laughs> <laughs> useful and I think uh, our uh, teachers from, that are um, uh, watching now they can uh, already start thinking how they can uh, adapt them and see what are the, the local yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. for this um, but I was uh, interesting if you can share with us since you shared with us so many uh, creative uh, ideas uh, if you can also share a bit about your own uh, creative process as a teacher like when you prepare your lessons when you think about what to do what how to combine like how how is it actually for you maybe you um, can inspire our teachers as well <laughs> i'm originally um, a teacher of art so i'm very creative from the start already and then i worked in ict and i noticed that being thinking in another way being thinking creatively I very, I often solved problems where my male colleagues didn't figure it out. So I thought it is important that female are getting more into tech business and doing tech things. So I'm happy that like uh, three of my kids are all in the tech business at this moment. So they, they really followed me. So I'm happy with that. And being creative, um, um, I, th I think it is difficult for me in school sometimes because in the, the beginning of the year, I have to hand in my all the lessons I'm going to do in that year. That's for me very frustrating. Yeah. And because I give ICT and I do it in such a funny way, they just let me do. And it is not on the curriculum, so I can, I'm allowed to do that. So, and I give those lessons in all different kinds of levels. So they are not so strict with me. But if I am in school and I really have to do it like that, so strict, I get frustrated because sometimes I see something on Twitter 
and I try it out myself. And then the next day I want to do it in my school. And that's just part of it. And I get, they gave me a big budget to do things like that. So I'm happy with that. But it is just, just try it. You know, sometimes you see after 10 minutes, it's not working so well. Then I have something. Then you need something else. You have, need a backup then. I always have like a backup to do something else. Yeah. And I'm not, of course, not alone. We have like a big 3D printing team which make things for me like for the bee bots we made like the small things you can put a pen in there so the bee bot is starting to write and we just bought a laser cutter so our students can feel the drawings they are making and of course I use the laser cutter to make nice things also to make in the classroom it is just um, fun to do and I like that you know if it's not if I'm not happy giving the lessons, I, I will look something else. I have to change it myself. Yeah. So happy teacher, happy students. <laughs> yes, 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 of course. Yeah. And of course, like last week, it was Halloween. We had a Halloween party. So I just gave, brought in pumpkins and we cut the pumpkins. And then the headmaster came, what are you doing? You have to give ICT lesson. I said, I will put in, I put in LED lights. I put in LED lights. <laughs> Everybody started laughing. <laughs> so it became an ICT lesson. Yeah, then it's an ICT lesson. <laughs> well, thank you so much for all these um, uh, sharing and ideas yes. and tips. And uh, we are uh, almost... Um, uh, near the end of the of the mm -hmm. session um if you have uh, you already uh, gave us uh, a lot but if you have a um, short uh, message um for uh, the teachers watching yes us. um I, I think you just have to try it to try it and try the things that you try it yourself don't try anything what you try what you have not if you want to give like a good scratch lesson you really have to make like five or ten scratch projects yourself or else you cannot give the scratch lesson even if it looks really simple the, the students have questions and if you every time you cannot answer the question they will not be happy with that so and you don't need a lot of money to do things you just can you can use scratch or other online activities very easy no money you don't need anything so that's always fun do it just do it yeah just do it. Uh, thank you uh, so much, Pauline. Uh, this was also uh, this was the first uh, um, uh, session in uh, in the parallel session uh, yes, <laughs> group. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and thank you so much for all the all the sharing. I'm going to switch now to Romanian yeah. for the for yes. the wrap up. Yeah. Um, mulțumesc tare mult și